everybody, this is going to be another Dressing With Your Corset episode and I am going to be doing quite a lot of quick changes today because I'll be wearing the same corset over or under various shirts with different necklines. Because I want to show you how different shirts can make you look like you almost have a different silhouette depending on the neckline, depending on how it accentuates the shoulders or how it makes you look slimmer. So I'm going to be demonstrating that today and so I'm going to be using this exact same corset for all of these outfits and this is is the Victorian underbust from Isabella Corsetry. Uh, I like this because it is cut from the exact same pattern as the Josephine, except it is cut a little bit higher on the hips and it's a little bit shorter in the center front here. So this is, I think, a really nice, simple, you know, little black underbust that can go with a lot of outfits and it's not heavily patterned, so it's not gonna detract you from uh, the different shirts that I'm gonna show you. So starting with this piece, I love tank tops. I like to use them as liners sometimes. And this one has a scoop neckline. So I like this because it nicely uh, shows off the décolletage, but not plunging, so it doesn't show off a whole lot of cleavage or anything. Um, and I feel that it nicely accentuates my naturally broad shoulders. If you have more narrow shoulders, then I don't know how this is going to work on you. It might help to make your décolletage look a little bit more broad. However, I've seen women with more narrow shoulders that have really pulled off a uh, halter neckline really well. So I only have one halter neckline because I think it makes me look like a linebacker, but I am going to show you what that looks like right now. So this is what the corset looks like with a halter top, and I'm wearing the exact same corset, laced around the same size as well, and uh, it nicely accentuates my shoulders, but almost a little bit too much for me. I think that halter tops look really gorgeous on people with a little bit of a longer neck. I have a naturally short neck and well-developed traps, so I almost feel like a linebacker in this, like I said before. However, it nicely accentuates uh, the curve of the corset because the eye follows the way that the fabric swells so it goes in and then out and then in and then out again so it just it nicely follows the curves and it accentuates the bust as well as the hips and many of you will recognize this shirt because I wear it in quite a lot of my videos it's kind of old and it's really comfy this is a, a v-neck and this one is more of a t-shirt. I know that the halter that I showed you before, it also kind of has a v-neck and it's a little bit plunged. Same as this one, except I prefer the fabric going over the shoulders like this. And the sleeve on this piece has a little bit more of a cap sleeve than an actual literal t-shirt sleeve. It's a little bit more of a baby doll style, so it allows my armpits to breathe, which is always nice. Uh, so this is what the plunge or the v-neck line looks like with the corset. You will also notice that a lot of my shirts have empire waistlines. So you can see in here there's uh, two pieces of fabric that's overlapping in the bust and then it attaches to the rest of the the bodice of the shirt right underneath this bust line right here right at the under bust area so the rest of the shirt is fitted underneath to my torso which makes a great liner because then it's not going to be um, bunching up when I tighten my corset Here's another shirt from the same place, Le Chateau. I get a lot of my clothes there actually because they make their clothes in Canada. But uh, this also has a, an empire waistline and a fitted through the bodice, so it's really nice to use as a liner. Now this one has more of a sweetheart neckline, and actually it's modeled directly after some of the shelf bust dresses that you saw in the 1950s. So you can see that there's ruching along the bust here, and then there is a band that comes down across underneath to give a little bit of support I would assume and uh, give some contrast between the waist and the bust here and then the band comes back up and you will see this I have several shirts because it is one of my favorite necklines um, I have this one here that I showed in some of my other videos and this is a, a vintage reproduction dress from Trashy Diva which unfortunately I cannot wear because it is way too short through the waist I need another two or three inches in the waist here so it costs pretty much as much as a dress to send it back, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But uh, this could be considered either a sweetheart or a Queen Anne. In the case of Queen Anne, it's not just the sweetheart and that's it. If this were a tube top, then that would be a sweetheart. However, you can count here one, two, three, four. Four. So it almost makes a diamond shape, or if you imagine a fifth one along the back, almost a, a pentagonal shape. And especially if you had a, a neckline that came up in a really slight collar up at the back, this would especially be 
considered Queen Anne. And I think the Queen Anne neckline is one of the most universally flattering necklines on women. Uh, whether you're large busted or small busted, uh, I think that's probably why it was so popular because uh, I just, I think that it nicely um, accentuates the décolletage. It doesn't make your shoulders look too narrow or too broad. And some people consider it one of the portrait necklines, so it would nicely accentuate everything going on in the face and neck area. However, I personally consider a portrait neckline to be something that comes a little bit off the shoulders and nicely accentuates the, uh, the collarbones. So I'm going to show you some off the shoulder styles right now. So this is an example of an off the shoulder sweater with the corset over top of it. And if you really want to create a lot of contrast between the breadth of your shoulders and the narrowness of your waist, then this is the shirt to do it. You can see that the shoulders almost make my hips look narrow by comparison. It's like my shoulders exploded. So um, even if you're not laced down very small in your corset, you can still create a lot of contrast. Also, because this has a white band going across and this is black, then it also gives the illusion of a really tiny waist and very broad shoulders. So that's what this looks like. So I've zoomed the camera out a little bit so you can see the, the outfit more clearly because this is actually more of a sweater dress. But this particular sweater is one of my favorite autumn additions to my wardrobe. And this one I think I got at uh, Rose Moon or Rose Wholesale. Anyways, this is probably the closest thing I have to a boat neckline or a bateau neckline because it goes straight across but right along the uh, clavicle area. Now this one is a little bit more complicated because it has the epaulettes right here, but um, just ignore that, this is a boat neckline. Now the thing that I really like about this particular sweater dress is the zipper that's going across the hips here because it actually helps to create the hourglass effect with this uh, the broad neckline going down into the small waist here. Unfortunately this sweater is a little bit too thick for me to wear a corset over top of it so I've just worn the corset underneath it and then belted it at the waist. And then this horizontal zipper going across accentuates the uh, wideness of the hips here. Now, if you're wearing jeans underneath it, I discovered that you can open the zipper here, and now it's stuck in my hair. <laughs> you can open the zipper and you can get to the pocket of your jeans, which is kind of cool. It adds a little bit more security, but this is what uh, the closest thing I have to a boat neckline looks like paired with the corset. So we are almost coming to the end of the video here. We have two necklines left. This one is a square neckline. So it's very similar to the scoop neckline that I showed you at the beginning of this video, except this one adds a little bit more interest and it uh, covers a little bit more of the chest here. It still accentuates the décolletage, but it doesn't show quite as much cleavage as the wider scoop neckline. I like this one because I like playing with shapes and geometry with my clothing. So this one has the square on top and then you can see the inverted triangle angle below that's accentuating my waist. Now this was a hand-me-down from my cousin and I checked the tag, she got it from La Biancos and I have not been able to find the exact same type of fabric but this is excellent for a liner in my particular case. Now this one is synthetic fabric so if you have a problem with your skin reacting to polyesters or whatnot or if you sweat a lot you might want to go with something a little bit more natural. I don't sweat a whole lot so I find that nylons work really well for me but this is just another example of what you could use as a liner and you can wear it underneath your clothing because it's thin enough or you can wear it by itself as a, a little bit more visual interest than one of your uh, normal neckline shirts. Okay guys, last neckline and thank you to those of you who have stuck with me to the end of this video. This is a turtleneck neckline a turtleneck line. <laughs> and those of you who have stuck with me for a really long time know that this is the same shirt that I wore in my very first YouTube video almost three years ago to the day, actually. So this is what this one looks like. And you can see that this is a microfiber uh, shirt and I like it as a liner in the winter time when it's super cold outside. I almost live in these unless I'm making a video in which case I actually make an effort to dress in something a little bit different. <laughs> but um, when it comes to turtlenecks, I like that it's really warm. However, this you, this one you can see that it's a little bit shorter and it's not right up close to my neck. I hate having things around my neck, which is why I don't wear a lot of uh, chokers or necklaces and I, I'm not a fan of posture collars for that reason, because I need to have my neck sort of free. 
Um, the long turtlenecks also don't suit me very well because I have a very short neck like I mentioned before. However, this one I consider it to be fine. So this is what this one looks like. It's very just plain, smooth, it makes a nice canvas to show off the, the corset and uh, black on black always like, it nicely shows off the silhouette. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video and you learned something new, then please be sure to click that like button because it helps support my channel. And if you have any shirts that you love to wear over top or underneath your clothing, leave a comment down below and let me know what neckline you thought was your favorite in this particular video. And I will see you guys in a few days for the next video. Bye!